What is transfer pricing and what are some sound policies that an organization should have in place with regard to transfer pricing? Well, to start with, transfer pricing arises when you have either a parent subsidiary relationship with regard to two organizations, a conglomerate relationship where multiple organizations are under the same control or same umbrella. When these organizations transfer goods or services between themselves, in that situation, because these are separate entities, they are not simply one organization, there are requirements in place uh, with regard to accounting for the cost of the goods and services transferred between them, particularly for tax purposes. Generally, transfer pricing is a set of rules that seeks to avoid the ability to avoid taxation or to create a favorable tax situation by intercompany transfers. Okay, if you will. So that's that's the purpose behind it. So let's begin with some of the methods by which companies must price these goods or services that are traded among themselves in essence. Well, to start with, one, uh, comparable uncontrolled prices. That is, you record the price as whatever is the market rate or the market value for such goods. So you're not getting any form of deal by dealing with another subsidiary branch or something like that of your company, right? The market price controls. So that's the first method. Second method is cost plus. That is uh, the organization that is transferring to the other organization uh, identifies all the costs associated with the product or service and then adds some margin. That's the plus portion to that cost when transferring to to the other uh, subsidiary group or the other organization. Okay, another approach is resale minus, and basically that's where you say what is the uh, market price of the good, and then from there you remove whatever profit margin you have plus the cost of selling the item. If you remove those and then sell it, in this situation the purchasing entity uh, does receive a real deal here uh, and the transferring entity uh, really is more at a break even or a slight loss in this scenario. Okay. Uh, next is a transactional net margin and, and this is when you basically have no information about the, what the market value of the goods and services are and you look to a third party organization that compiles uh, comparable transactions, if you will, or comparable types of assets to try to get information on what a an adequate margin on the transfer of this type of products should be. And you use that metric to try to assign some level of margin to either a whole series or individual uh, transfers of value, goods or services. Okay. And lastly, um, in scenarios where you co-develop uh, some asset or something of value between two organizations. Uh, how do you account for the transfer of value each way? Uh, well, in that case, you do some form of profit split. That is whatever is the value of what you created um, type scenario. And then you attribute uh, that value uh, both ways. If, if one party is transferring their value to the other, uh, you would do some level of whatever the actual price of it should be on the market, you would do a profit split. Uh, you would split it between the two organizations. So those are the methods for transfer pricing that are generally accepted or acceptable uh, under the Treasury regulations. Now, what are some sound policies to have in place to make certain that your approach to transfer pricing will not be challenged by the Treasury and thus disregarded so you get none of the intended tax benefits and potentially some very negative tax repercussions? Well, to start with, have an advanced pricing agreement in place. So uh, if you understand that you're going to need assets from the uh, other uh, controlled organization, then have at the agreement in place that states the terms of uh, purchase of, of those assets, whether it's goods or services. Okay, so having that in place. Uh, document any transaction. The individual transfers the value to make certain you have the records uh, to substantiate uh, things like cost and the transfer price as well. Be careful about taking losses 
on any such transaction. In that situation, it's more likely to be challenged by the Treasury and uh, disallowed as uh, a valid expense for one organization or the other, okay? Or you would have some level of in imputed income, which you do not want, okay? Uh, if you have transfer pricing um, matters, you're going to, on your tax return, and this is the organizational tax return, file a Schedule UTP, which basically identifies the, uh, the transfer pricing um, transactions, and it identifies any challenges that may exist to this type or concerns that may exist about this type of transfer in the situation, and you'll explain how you meet the requirements there of the treasurer, treasury with regard to transfer pricing, but you're also identifying for disclosure purposes any issues uh, that are potentially going to present themselves as part of this, uh, this pricing. And then lastly, make sure to set aside a reserve. If you believe there are going to be genuine um, pri transfer pricing issues, set aside a reserve that covers the discrepancy there between what otherwise a, a fair value or a market value would be between that and the price that you actually paid uh, to cover, like I say, the scenario where uh, the price is disallowed and then an alternative price is imputed by the Treasury. So if you follow all of these policies together, uh, that you'll be more likely, once again, to comply with the rules uh, applicable to transfer pricing.